We use biochar here at Umbe Gardens as part of our permaculture practice. It's a dense carbon structure that holds onto nutrients really well, making it a perfect soil improver. Oh! Skills. We're going to chop some good solid hard wood that's between an inch and two inches in diameter. Allow any fresh pieces of cut wood to dry or season before making into biochar. Get a nice fire roaring. This is a community space and someone's done away with our fire pit. So we've improvised with an old wheelbarrow. Ta-da! The ideal woods for making biochar are nice hardwoods such as hazel, ash, oak, hornbeam. So now we've got our branches. And we're going to save these big thick stems that are between an inch and two inches in diameter and cut off all of these highly branched bits. Now we don't use these for biochar but we can save them to stick around things like cabbages and lettuces over winter to stop birds nibbling on them so they're really really useful in the garden so keep hold of those. So now we're going to cut up our branches to be in small size battens that will fit in whatever size bin we're using. We're going to take our cut up wood and we're going to place it inside a metal vessel. Now that vessel, the most important thing is, it has a reasonably tight fitting lid. You don't want it to be airtight because you're going to create kind of like a, a pressurised thing, but you want it to be just enough so that you're not letting loads and loads of oxygen in. If you let oxygen into this vessel with the wood inside, you'll end up with ash instead of biochar. Um, so we're going to throw all our wood in. We take our bin full of logs and chuck it on the fire. It's advisable at this point to wear fire gloves for safety. I'm now going to leave the fire to completely burn out and for the bin to completely cool down before I open it up. And in a couple of hours, we'll have perfectly made biochar. So there it is, our finished biochar product. So now that you've got your biochar made up, I'm going to show you how to use it in the garden. Biochar helps to keep nutrients in the soil, way better than soil alone. It acts like a sponge to soak up extra water, meaning it can make your plants more drought tolerant. It can produce and increase yields of your crops by up to 12%. First, smash your biochar into small pieces. Definitely less than a centimetre, preferably powdered. Smash! Now we've got our powdered biochar. And it's like a battery without any charge at the moment. Um, biochar is a really densely structured thing, carbon molecule, like a sponge, as I've said before. Um, in fact, one gram, which is about a teaspoon, has hundreds of square meters of surface area to suck in nutrients and moisture. So we're gonna charge it up with something liquidy, like liquid seaweed feed that you can buy commercially, um, molasses, compost tea that you can make from the compost at home, but today I'm going to use comfrey and nettle feed that we've made from old comfrey. Um, so I'm literally just going to pour it in. Charge her up. We're going to leave this mixture to sit for a few days to a few weeks. Like the ocean. So now we've got our sloshy mixture that we've let charge up for a few days. We're going to pour it on our soil. Some people like to strain it, but I think that's a bit of hassle. Um, we're going to pour it on our soil at a ratio of no more than 15% biochar to soil. So usually a couple of really good sized handfuls or a you know, pint or two per metre squared is perfect. We're just going to pour it on. So we're going to dig it in, just the top layer. Um, you can also use this at the bottom of plants as you plant them up. Um, a handful of it at the bottom of a hole when you're planting up a tomato or a lettuce is great. And just make sure it's all lovely and incorporated into the soil. Happy soil!